Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where today we're having a bit of a tech theory discussion-y thing around Low Shuffle Merging. Now, Low Shuffle Merge came out in preview back in the runtime nine days, it's a whole six months ago if you cast your mind back, um, and it's all about making merges more efficient. Now, it's a big thing, when you merge data, you have to change whole files. That's just the way the Delta works, it's the way Parquet works. You can't just open up a Parquet file, change some stuff in the middle and then recompress it. That's just not how it works. So there's always a load of redundant data copying going on whenever you update data inside a Delta table. However, if that's going through a merge, that has a load of inefficiencies. You're getting rows that haven't changed and then shuffling them around and performing calculations and doing stuff to them that isn't making any physical changes and then writing the data back down and that's not efficient. Low shuffle merge is all about making that better. Now, we touched on Lotion Merge in the last Databricks video, the big bumper news edition, but somewhere in the middle of a 40 minute video, I was saying, this is why it's so good. And I want to take a little bit of time to pull it out. Let's talk about it on its own, what it actually means. Take a whiteboard, which I never get to do these days, and sketch out kind of how to think about what it's doing and why it's going to work faster and why it's going to reduce the amount of work that you guys have to do looking after Delta tables. That's the plan for today. As always, if you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments, have you been using the preview version of Low Shuffle? How big a change has it made? Have you seen suddenly your queries have accelerated? Any problems with it? Are you having to optimize less? Because you should not have to optimize as much depending on the query patterns that you're using to apply merging. So things to think about. Let's start off having a bit of a look about how they explain it in the docs. I think this is missing missing a couple of diagrams to actually explain what's going on here, but we can have a look at what it's doing. So the merge command came in and allow us to say, hey, I've got some change data. Apply these changes to my existing Delta table. Update it when this merge criteria is met. Update it when this other merge criteria is met. Insert when it's not matched. Delete when this thing is met. That kind of normal merge statement -y stuff. Um, and anytime there's rows that haven't changed, so yeah, sure, we're having to update the file because there's a record or two inside that file that has changed, but all the other rows that just should get copied across as a redundant copy, this is the thing that we're targeting for. And we're saying, well, actually what we want to do is reduce the amount of work we're doing. And it also affects optimizing, which is really good. So two things it does. Performance. We want to read less data. Sure, that's going to work by file skipping. That kind of just happens anyway. But once we've read the data, we want to do fewer things for more of the data. Yeah, we want to say, well, actually, I only want to do the complicated stuff to the data that needs to have the complicated stuff applied to it. The data that I'm just doing a rudimentary copy across and I'm replicating because I have to, because that's how Parquet works. Let's get rid of the expensive stuff that we're doing. So just grab unmodified rows. The data that was in the same file as records that are being changed, but haven't been updated as part of the merge, and don't bother doing a shuffle on it. Don't bother doing any calculations or any of the, the kind of um, the updates that we're going to make. Make it as simple as possible. That's one thing. So essentially splitting out and saying, well, we've got two paths. Rows that have changed and need to go through shuffles and some joins and other things that's happening. Sure, put them down that path. Rows that haven't changed, keep them aside and go, make do a more optimized, more streamlined path for that data. So you should find your merge queries are going a lot faster if you have that kind of pattern. The kind of pattern where you're doing a few updates to a load of files and you've got loads of records that aren't being changed by the update. They're the kind of things that you should suddenly see go faster if you've had this turned on or if you start using 10.4 where it's turned on by default. Well, the optimized data layout is even better. Even better? <laughs> Better for me because I just love a good data layout. I'm that kind of nerd. Um, and this is what we're saying is if I've bothered to get my files in the right shape, you've done some Z ordering, I've done my optimizing to curate and collate my data into nice, good, chunky, compressed files, and then I do a merge, I don't have to spit out a load of shuffled up, unorganized, unoptimized files. If I've already organized 90% of my data and I'm only changing 10%, Keep the 90% as it was, so I don't have to re-optimize that file. That's what this is for. 
It's essentially looking at it and it's thinking, well, I can maintain the optimizations that I've done for the rows that haven't changed and only bother doing the shuffling uh, stuff to the other data. So not only does it affect performance in terms of the query is going to go faster to update the records, but actually the resulting data layout should be maintain any optimizations you've already applied to it. That's what we're doing. There, they are the two things that is in low shuffle merge. Um, and it's worth making to say there is a flag to turn it on. So spark to Databricks to delta.merge.enable low shuffle. You can set that to true. But if you're using 10.4, which is the, the runtime that went uh, live last month, that's just enabled by default and apparently has no effect in Databricks runtime. I don't know if that means you just can't turn it off. But I don't necessarily know why you would turn it off. So it just makes sense. I'm not going to quibble too much about that. So if you're using an older runtime, probably should turn it on if you're having merge as part of your patterns. And I'll talk about that before we talk about actually essentially those two things of the performance and the optimizing. I'm just going to sketch out in a whiteboard what how you should be thinking about how that works just to kind of try and visualize why it's faster. If that, if that explanation made no sense to you whatsoever, we'll sketch it out and we'll talk it through. In terms of where we use merge, let's skip over to the whiteboard, which I never get to use these days. So I like being in my whiteboard. I hate the new whiteboard, but that's a different story. Okay, so uh, let's talk bronze, silver, gold, right? Let's talk Databricks medallion architecture uh, parlance. So we've got our lake. Whoop. We've got our three layers. I'm saying, well, that's my bronze, that's my silver, that's my gold. BSG, it's not Battlestar Galactica. And we're bringing in our data, whatever it happens to be. And then in our bronze layer, we'll have loads and loads and loads of files. We tend to just have, well, here's all the data that I'm loading. I've got duplicates. I'll have new updates to existing files. That's just a load of data that I've been piling and appending to. Essentially, most of the patterns with bronze tend to be append only. I'm just saying, we'll just add it to the list. Add it to the bottom of the pile. Nice and efficient. Just land the data into the lake as quickly as possible. When we talk about silver, that tends to be a nice curated table that we've done some validation to, we've done some cleansing, we've fixed the data types, we've made it nice and good and standardized. Essentially, we've done some data engineering. And that, that action, what we're doing here, we say we'll take the latest bit of info and put that into my silver layer, that tends to be where we're doing merges. It's certainly the first place that we tend to be doing merges in this architectural pattern. So we're always taking this data and that, depending on how often you run that, that can be a tiny amount of data. You know, we were saying, well, maybe sitting inside this, there's, I don't know, let's just say small amount of data, there's 10 million rows in there, but I'm actually, I'm running this as a stream. Maybe I'm only getting like, some, you know, five, 10 records per micro batch. If you think about how many records that's updating, that's a tiny amount of records in the size of my table. Scale that up and we're talking about billions of records in that silver. And if I've got maybe 50 records that happen to span a lot of those different files in my silver layer when I'm merging it in because I want to get rid of duplicates because I want to have the updated record. I want to see the current state. That's going to be really inefficient in the old style of merging. But that, that is the primary place when we use merges. Now, would we be using it in our gold layer? So if we're saying, like, I'm not going to turn it into, you know, let's talk proper lake house, let's go facts and dimensions, things like that. Absolutely, dimensions, we often merge into it. Facts, uh, it depends if it's an updating fact. Some facts are append only, and that's nice and efficient. Sometimes we can do partition switching with a delta table and just use replace where and just say, well, here's the latest version of that month. Let's just get rid of the existing one. But oftentimes we can't and we have to do a merge and say, well, merge these records into there where it's changed. So we may have a merge going in there as well. So with our gold layer, it's a, it depends on the kind of model. Absolutely with our silver layer, every single time we're doing a merge into that silver table. Certainly the way advancing analytics work, that tends to be our default pattern. So is this gonna help us? Yes, because we merge all data regardless into the silver layer. And that's one of the reasons I was so excited when Delta Live tables got the ability to do apply changes, AKA a merge statement, because it now fits our default architectural pattern, which makes so much more sense. So this is why it's important because every scrap of data going through our reference architecture has a merge. Therefore, it's going to make things faster. So let's talk about the days before low shuffle merge. So I've been working away. I've been merging some data. I've got loads and loads of small little files. And then I've been good. And I've kind of, at the end of the day, I've stopped the stream. I've optimized. I've restarted the stream. 
at the end of the week, at the end of my process, whenever at some point I've ran an optimize over all my files and said, well, let's just tidy that up into something a bit cleaner. And so I've now got, maybe, let's say, two big chunky files that are nicely organized. And then I run a vacuum and I get rid of all this stuff. I no longer care about that. That's my existing table. My existing table, nice and optimized. I've got two big chunky files that's got all my data in there. And I carefully curated that. Oh, what's inside there? Maybe that's kind of going from record one to record 100. Let's go from record 101 to record 200. Nice and optimized. If someone says and queries it and says, like, start from this table where my record is ID 150, I know I can go and read that table. I don't have to go and read that table. Therefore, I read less data. Therefore, my query is faster. That's the whole point of data skipping and optimizing. That's good. Nice and fast. And then I say, well, okay, I'm going to receive an updated table. So I'm getting my, what in the old days we'd call a delta. I'm getting my change records. I'm saying, well, here's my new records arriving into my bronze layer. I need to apply these changes. And what would normally happen is go, right, okay, so these changes, let's say that there's actually two records that were updated by this. And these two records is there's one record in that file and there's one record in that file. The rest of the records aren't changed. So we're saying, okay, I've got kind of, 10k records in there, 10k records in there. There's only two records being updated by this change, but because they're in the two different files, I have to update those two files. So what it's going to do is going to run a query and going to create a Spark job. And that Spark job is going to claim, I'm going to read from that. I'm going to read from these two and bring them into one data frame. It's going to then have to shuffle because it's doing a join between our change records and what's going in. But if I had in my applies, I had some calculations, I had to update those records. If in my apply, I had to take the existing um, data and update it via part of a calculation, it might actually sort of bring those records together with, you know, maybe a, probably a broadcast join to apply my changes. It's going to shuffle my existing records together and they'll go through maybe several stages in that query. And then depending on how it was actually optimizing that, that might kick out something. Maybe let's say it's a little bit unoptimized. I've got like six different... Um, I can count. <laughs> this is six different files coming out at the end of it, just because of the different shuffles it went through. Now, those six aren't going to preserve the order when the way merge used to work. That nice one to ten, one to one hundred, hundred and one to two hundred, isn't actually maintained across that. So even though maybe the two records that actually got changed just exist in two of my things, I've had to pull all the other unchanged records over. They've gone through that same process. They've been shuffled up. So I end up one. Yeah, I've processed nearly 20,000 rows that hadn't changed, but I've still put them through that same process. But two, my data layout is not preserved. So I have to go and re-optimize that. I need to run another optimized job to take all that data and go, okay, we'll change it now. Let's re-optimize it into the state. That's the way shuffle has been working up until now. Shuffle. Merge has been working up until now before we got the low shuffle um, ability. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. So we say with low shuffle turned on, so from 10.4 onwards or in after the kind of Databricks 9, if you turn on that flag, we've got those two records. Nice optimized files. Now it's going to go, right, okay, low shuffle merge. Let's make a query plan and let's do it a little bit differently. So we're going to take those two records. They're going to go off in their own path, bring those together. It's going to do that same job that it did. So it's going to take the changes that we had to the Delta records bring it in, it's going to do those calculations, it's going to work out what's spitting out randomly. And it's going to spit out, you know, maybe that's super inefficient, maybe that makes two files, Ugh. record in each of the updated data. But the other stuff doesn't go through that path. So I don't have 20K, I've got two records going through there, coming from my original table, not the 20K of updated and unchanged records. The unchanged, we're going to go magical sparkle path now, they actually get put down their own path and go, well, okay, oh, that's not changed. Let's keep that as two blocks of data again, and it'll try and preserve the ordering. So actually we'll get 9,999 records in two files that maintain the same Z ordering. So we should actually see in the same way that we've had originally, we've got something fairly well preserved in terms of one to 100 and then 101 to 200, unless we'd move the record that happened to be the min or max. Whereas, essentially, we've maintained as much of the file layout as we could as part of this process. So we're not putting these bits 
they're not going through multiple shuffle stages. They're not applying the calculations that we've applied to updated rows. We're just saying, oh yeah, well these bits haven't changed. Don't bother doing that. Just make a new copy of that file without those unmodif with without the modified records in it. And then they can go a separate path. So yeah, is the table absolutely pristine and perfect after the fact? Oh, I've got some new files I probably need optimizing. But most of my table is much, much better preserved. I preserved, if they were, if you scale up and we're talking about millions or billions of records, that's a huge amount of data processing I've avoided doing. And it's a huge amount of optimizing I no longer need to do. I no longer need to run an optimize on those. I just need to optimize the latest bit of extra data. That is what low shuffle merging is all about. Now you can go and have a bit of a dig in the query plan. I've, I've not actually got a demo together to show you the two different query plans. I just want to talk through that difference. So the difference of saying, put everything through the same plan or just be a bit smarter about it and go, oh, well, I've actually bothered organizing those. Let's not bother trashing that. Now, obviously there's going to be differences. It all depends on the type of data update that you're making. In this scenario, I've got the worst case when I'm doing a tiny amount of records in each big file. And so I've got the most amount of redundancy I could possibly get. Maybe my update record is actually doing most of that file. Maybe I'm actually updating the majority of that whenever I do. And it's quite big, chunky things, in which case I wouldn't have as many unpreserved rows. And I probably have to actually optimize them after the if I'm splitting it up into a few different. I'm not going to say it's going to be absolutely perfect for every single thing and it's going to make everything much much faster it depends on the profile of how many rows you're updating in those existing files and how many files you are hitting but even the worst case when it hits every single record in that that's just going to work the same way uh, the merge has already worked so the worst case is it stays the same best case is you suddenly see things are one preserving a load of work you've already done and two just going a bit faster so that is why I am excited about Low Shuffle Merge. And that's why I want, to, I want you guys to take a look. If you're using 10.4 as your default runtime now, then just take a look at any existing processes that you've got that are using a merge. And now without doing anything, you should see it go faster and you should see a change in the behavior for how many files are output at the end of that process because of Low Shuffle Merging. Okay. Hopefully that all makes sense. And I know... Bit of rent, you might just be thinking, yeah, that makes sense. In fact, why do I need to care? Because that's kind of a backend thing. It's just going to work regardless of what I do. And it's kind of true. It depends how you look at this stuff. But just be aware that someone, maybe you had a load of, maybe you'd built because you've seen mergers going bad in the past, you had to put an optimize at the end of your process. So every time it ran, you optimize to make sure it's right. You don't need to do that necessarily anymore. Maybe you can get away now optimizing once a week rather than after every load because it's going to preserve a load of stuff. You can now challenge some of your procedures and go, we can get away with doing some of the things a little bit more as effect. It's doing more stuff for me. Maybe you can just scale down your cluster because it's doing less work. So some of the performance tuning that you've done in the past, you can now revisit it and go, well, it's doing less work now because a lot of it's just copying them. It's not putting them through expensive shuffle operations. Therefore, I can do more in parallel or use a smaller cluster or just turn it on for a shorter amount of time. All of which are fantastic things for me because it saves me money and it makes me happy. Cool. That is all I wanted to run through today. As always, do not forget to like and subscribe. And let me know what you think and how your experience with low shuffle mergers has been so far. Till then, catch you next time. Cheers.